Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and welcome to Knife AQ episode 162, the series where I answer all your knife questions, sharp or dull. This week, amongst the things we're taking a look at, we're going to find three great EDC combos for just everyday normal people, people in the trades, as well as people who work outdoors. Let's get into it. All right, so if you're new to this series, welcome. We're very happy you are here. Um, what we do is we pull questions from the comment section below these videos and try to answer them as the best we can, or the best I can. Thomas behind there just kind of makes snarky comments. I don't answer things. <laughs> uh, this week, we're going to start with, <coughs> excuse me. This week we're going to start. Uh, first question is from For This Land. Uh, question for Knife AQ. In your view, what is the best knife slash multi tool combo for average EDC? Best combo for someone in a trade like construction or plumbing? And best combo for someone who works in the woods or hunts? Sure, this is a fun one. Um, the thing that's going to be interesting is. Um, we kind of have to boil these things down to like their least common denominator in a way, uh, because the, for instance, like the trades is a perfect example. Um, a plumber and an electrician may have, do have very different uh, jobs and may have different needs that they would need their multi-tools for or knives for. Um, but we're gonna try to give something that's a good base, or I'm gonna try to give something that's a good base, good broad section. Um, for the knife, this is like, the hardest to narrow down, quite honestly, because there's so many great average EDC or, or knives that are perfect for average EDC out there. But what I think is the way to go, I think something with a three inch blade uh, so that you can take it just about anywhere. And however, you don't want it to be too small. Um, I want to have things that have enough handle, enough you know meat in the hand, enough girth that they can cut a little bit larger. They're not, it's not going to feel like you have a mini knife. Uh, so two that came to mind immediately. Uh, well, you folks know I'm a big fan for those on a budget, especially the Kaiser Amicus, one of my favorite knives of last year. It's like 47 bucks, nine CR stainless blade, three inches long, but check it out. It's broad. You've got plenty of belly and the G10 handles actually can fill the hand quite nicely. It's three. It doesn't quite flex all or fit all four of my fingers fully, but I have a full four finger grip on the knife and it feels super solid. It's ambidextrous thanks to the uh, button lock placement, even though it's right hand facing, very easy to use, reversible clip. It's great for just about anyone. And you can get it in all black too, if you prefer. Uh, for something uh, more premium, um, something that has better uh, edge retention, the Wee Knife Banter came to mind pretty readily as well. Uh, this one right here is our Knife Center exclusive on sale for about 110 bucks right now. For that, you've got G10 handles and a 20 CV blade. Good stuff. Again, nice three inch length, nice enough of a hand filling grip that it can cut bigger. It doesn't feel like a mini knife and yet it's such a length that's not gonna, you know, be too, uh, be too much uh, for taking just about anywhere. But man, this, this combo of blade size, but you know, bigger cutting handle, it's a combo that it just works in just about any context. Yes, some of you might like a larger feeling knife or a more mini feeling knife, and that's why there are literally thousands of choices out there. But if we gotta boil it down to like one thing that's gonna work, one type of thing that's gonna work everywhere, I think those would be a great option for, um, for the knife. Uh, I would also say we actually did a video on this about two years ago, so it's probably, Actually, it's definitely time for an update because a lot of nice stuff has come in since then. Uh, we had a, the best pocket knife for almost everyone. We'll leave a link to that up here. Um, you can check out some of those things. It doesn't quite, well, just go check it out. There's some good stuff there too. Uh, likewise, we did a video on the best Swiss Army knife for everyday carry. Leave a link to that one up here if we can. I hope so, Thomas. We got We'll see. Space. Um, if not, they will definitely be linked in the uh, the description below, and probably should also link them in the description. That's where they go. That's where they go. Um, yeah, three inch knife and a Swiss Army knife to go with it. Um, you know, long time viewers of this channel know I'm a big fan of the Evo Grip S18, uh, but the saw on that not really necessary for everyday carry. The Victorinox Compact is a great option, of course, but kind of the stereotypical, I think 
basic everyday carry Swiss Army knife is the Super Tinker. Uh, and Super Tinker over the standard Tinker because I think that set of uh, scissors that the Super Tinker comes with is invaluable uh, for everyday carry stuff. And these are about $47. At least this uh, American flag version is um, 45 bucks for the standard red version. So it's $2 extra for the stars and stripes in this case. Worth it. Backside, you've got the uh, three-dimensional Phillips screwdriver. You've got the parcel hook, which is maybe less obviously useful uh, for most folks. Oops, sorry. Uh, you've also got that nice awl there for reaming and poking. You've got two blades, smaller pen blade and a larger main blade. You've also got the uh, can opener and your bottle opener, each with driver capabilities on the end. Just a lot of good basic stuff. That'd be my average EDC for just about every one solution. What about the trades? That was the, uh, the next part of your question. So I kind of leaned on what I like to do when I'm you know, doing work around the house. I don't own a lot of uh, Tonto bladed knives, but I usually enjoy carrying something with a Tonto and it usually winds up being this bailout of mine right here. When I'm doing chores around the house, doing fixer upper type of things, I like the ability to use the, uh, the leading edge of that for chisely and scrapey type of things. So I'm gonna lean in that direction for uh, the, the trades in this case, but if I were you know, using this knife in a professional context, I might want something that's a little less expensive and I wouldn't be uh, as concerned about it getting truly banged up. And maybe something that just feels a bit girthier too, a bit more tanky. You know, I love the bailout because of its very thin blade. It's nice and slicey, but maybe I want something with a little more chutzpah. We'll go with that. Um, and something that I wouldn't have to worry about um, too much either price-wise. Got two options. Uh, the Emerson CQC 7K from Kershaw comes with uh, an OS 8, no, it's an 8CR blade, 49 bucks, basic stuff, but you got that nice chisely profile. You've got a frame lock, and I think this is really a nice consideration for, you know, areas like construction where you might be around a lot of dust, a lot of muck in your day-to-day -day work. An open-backed frame lock like this, very easy to clean out, to flush out with either water or air. Not a lot of places for things to get trapped. The pivot plays into that too. There are washers in this pivot, no ball bearings, wanna keep it, again, easy peasy in uh, regards to that application. Flicks open quite nicely with the thumb disc, of course, but also it is waveable. You've got the Emerson Wave, so you can open it on the hem of your pocket as you draw the knife so it's ready to go just as quick as can be, which is pretty cool. Uh, one more option um, that you could also check out, not quite as easy to keep clean, but still nice and robust and nicely priced, the Airlight from Cold Steel. This is a great, great knife actually, especially for 65 bucks. Aus 10 blade steel, nice chisely front end to the Tonto, nice and slim, so it's not gonna take up a bunch of space. Again, like I said, not quite as easy to uh, keep clean, but you do have washers in the, or sorry, ball bear. Wait, what am I? washers in the pivot, not ball bearings. So again, that's one less place for dirt to get trapped up. And it cleans out decently, just again, the frame lock has it beat in that regard. Let's talk about the triad lock. Super strong, super durable, and can stand up to some of that chisely stuff. Both good options. Uh, now when I'm doing my around the house stuff with my uh, bail out there, I usually have uh, one of my Leathermans. Uh, most often uh, my modified free P2. I've also got an arc that I've been uh, been using a lot, like them both, but for the job site, I want something, again, with a little more oomph, a little more, you know, girth. And the Surge, I think, is the way to go. It feels more sturdy than the Arc. It's not as quick, it's not as fun, but it just feels like a real solid tool. I mean, just, that's just so satisfying. Uh, you've got, the bit driver on the inside, with, which is uh, interchangeable with all of Leatherman's flat bits, as well as regular bits, as long as with a uh, adapter. Can opener, might not need that on the job site, but hey, you got it if you need it. Nice, robust drivers and an all on the other side. And the real reason, or the, uh, the other reason, apart from just the tank-like build quality of the Surge, are the tools you get on the outside. You do get two blades, a serrated and a standard drop point. You also get, where is it? A really nice set of scissors, beefier than any other scissor in the Leatherman current lineup that I'm aware of anyway, just quite nice. 
And then finally, the other side here, we've got a saw blade installed, but this is swappable to a file as well, thanks to the holder here. Other things can be made to fit in that spot and you can buy replacements, super easy. And if you're gonna be using something like this every day and your file wears out, you can swap in a new one. If your saw blade you know, wears out, it's gonna be hard to sharpen these tiny teeth, you can just swap in a new one. Nice thing there, especially when you're on the clock. <laughs> and last but not least, you mentioned uh, people who work in the woods or hunts. I'd argue they're two different things potentially, but uh, I got something for you here. This is a fixed blade and a multi-tool with a saw. That's the, uh, the bullet points right here. Um, can we not talk about Amora? I don't think so. Another day, another Mora. Another day, another Mora. Mora over really anything, right? The Cans Bowl would be a great choice, I think. They're relatively affordable, actually quite affordable. They start uh, at like $37. Uh, for standard versions, you can also upgrade uh, to the sheath version that has the diamond sharpener and a fire starter on the side. These are like $58, which is quite nice. This knife is lightweight, it's nimble. If you're you know, working in the woods every day, if you need a heavier tool, let me back up. A lot of folks like me will you know, head out uh, on camping trips and such and think I need that one tool option. I need that survival knife just in case. And there's validity to that thinking, but if you're the person who is working in the woods every day and you need, you know, if, if you typically will need a heavier use tool, you're probably gonna have that available to you. As such, the thing on your belt, I think you'd be uh, better served with something lightweight, easy to carry, like the cans bowl. Uh, the scalloped front end on the, the Scandi ground knife thins it out, so it would work better for uh, hunting versus certain other Mora models. And it's just a fantastically comfortable fantastically useful knife for not a lot of money. Uh, in the spirit of a couple other options, I gotta talk about the uh, new large uh, QSP Canary. Phenomenal new release this year and nice and affordable, 62 bucks for what you're getting here. Four and a quarter inch blade, uh, tough carbon steel. Wait, was it carbon steel? I can't remember. CR8MO2VSI. I forget what I, I had to look up what that steel was last time. If I'm remembering correctly, it's you, you should be able to get something like uh, D2 levels of edge retention, but it's going to be tougher, uh, which is important on a fixed blade. You might thrash a little bit. Uh, the handles have uh, the holes in them here to reduce a little or uh, remove a little bit of weight. That gives you a little bit more traction, but maybe a little bit more uh, surface area that could possibly raise a hot spot. Um, it does feel pretty comfortable though. Comes with a real, really well executed sheath for the money too. Kydex with a rotatable belt clip right here. Come on, there we go. So you got options there, which is nice. And you don't have to remove your belt to take it on and off. And if you're, you're putting on and off your uh, uniform uh, on any given day, that might be a good option too. One more, gotta mention an old favorite, um, $107 or about $108 right now on the site. Uh, the Becker BK-16. If you want something that's American made and super comfortable, this is a great option. They're not as uh, cheap as they used to be, of course, but you know, what is these days? Still at an attainable price. Nice five thirty seconds of an inch thick blade, full flat grind, versatile shape, you know, four and three eighths of an inch. And like I said, super comfy. This is about the size you want. Like these are three good options, but like a four to four and a half inch blade drop point with an efficient grind. Take that for uh, what you want and apply it to whatever else is out there because it's a great size and shape to be a belt knife in this sort of situation. Comes with a sheath like so. You got a pocket on the front for extra doodads. The ability to take it on and off the belt without uh, removing said belt is also achievable right here. Uh, what else did I say? Oh, so yeah, after that, you want a, a multi-tool with a saw. At least I want a multi-tool with a saw. Uh, and I've got two of my favorites right here. Personal one that I uh, often take camping myself is the Victorinox Outrider. Uh, it is a larger Swiss Army knife with the locking main blade, which is quite nice. And this is a blade that happens to work really nicely for stuff like you know, eating, food prep, as well as smaller work, uh, and is a great complement to uh, any of these larger knives that you see right here. It has a nice long saw. It's got a really nice pair of scissors on them as well as some of the other uh, standard bits and bobs. I won't get into them too much. Um, I will say, corkscrew, great for untying knots, which can be uh, 
handy in the outdoors. Uh, another thing that could be kind of a one-stop shop is the Leatherman Signal right here. Uh, you don't get a pair of scissors like you do on the Outrider, but you do get that pair of pliers, which could come in quite handy, especially if you need to work with like snares and traps as part of your, uh, your out adventures. That's the word. Um, other outdoor specific features it has, it's got the saw right there, of course. You've got a main blade, partially serrated. I would probably prefer that uh, fully plain edge myself. That's just a personal choice. Diamond sharpener that pops off the side and this other side contains uh, another pop-off piece that has a, a survival whistle and another fire starter right there. Plus you can hammer with the bottom. So a lot of good stuff you would use in a outdoor scenario. There we go. Hope that helps. Hope that helps. That's all I got. Um, let me know your folks' thoughts, um, whether you agree with my logic in terms of the types of tools picked. Um, these are just some of the options that are out there. We sell a lot of stuff at the Knife Center. <laughs> all right. Uh, next question comes from John Cray, 9395. Uh, what is the difference between a sheep's foot and a Warncliffe blade, if any? All right, I have addressed this on the channel before, um, but I'm doing it again, choosing to do it again, because even when I've done it before, people have told me I'm wrong. Well, I'm here to, to stand up for my honor and say, no, this is, this is what it is. All right, sheep's foot blades and Warncliffe blades are exactly the same in two, or in one particular area. The edge is completely straight. There is no curve to a sheep's foot blade if you're just talking about a straight ahead sheep's foot blade. Throw the word modified in front, things can change there a little bit. But here, here's some examples. The sheep's foot blade, as you might see on this particular shrade here, this is the old timer mariner's knife, features a straight, or a straight edge, although they've over sharpened this one just a little bit and brought a little bit of curve right at the tip. I know that defeats my purpose, um, which is why I also brought out this uh, Spyderco Atlantic Salt right here. Blunt tip, completely straight edge. And that blunt tip was important for the Mariner's knife right here because they sailors wanted to be able to use this without puncturing the sails or any other uh, fabric unnecessarily while at sea. That is the sheep's foot blade. Whereas the Warncliffe blade has a point. <laughs> it's not pointless like the sheep's foot blade. But um, basically you've got a longer tapering spine on a true Warncliffe blade that comes down and gives you a very acute tip. Again, perfectly straight edge on a Warncliffe blade and on a sheep's foot blade. Modified is a possibility. Throw a modified in front of there, we can start to get a little funky, such as this Ace Nibbler here from Giant Mouse. There is a bit of curvature to the edge. And yes, this is one of those perfect cases that, that illustrates why it's hard to classify blade shapes sometimes. They call it a sheep's foot. Our website calls it a sheep's foot. Is it pointless? It's kind of got a point. So is it kind of worn cliffy? You tell me. Reverse Tantos entered the chat. No. Heavens no. <laughs> Let's see, do we have any reverse Tantos today? No, no I won't even say that. Yeah. <laughs> Should make that my mission every week. Actually, I'm kind of upset with myself. This is the only uh, knife on the table, or of, of this question, that doesn't have a uh, nautical theme. We've got the Atlantic Salt, we've got the Maritime, uh, the Mariner's Knife, you've got the Sea Snake, and the, what do I call this? It's the Nibbler, right? The nib. It's the Nibbler. Is Giant uh, Mouse even? When you're fishing, you might get nibbles. They're all aquatic themed. See, I didn't mess up. Thank you, Thomas. Welcome back. <laughs> all right. Now we're gonna move on to the segment we call Measured Once, Cut Twice. And I'm really gonna just use this to uh, clarify a position I took on last week's FAQ where I said, there's no such thing as an heirloom quality knife. And a lot of you folks told me I was flat out wrong. But a lot of the folks that did, I think were kind of missing the point I was trying to make and that might be my fault. I might not have made it quite as well as I intended. So I'm gonna sum it up here real quick. I think there's a difference between a knife being heirloom worthy heirloom quality. Absolutely there are knives that are heirlooms and should be heirlooms and I am looking forward to, well I'm not looking forward to passing on knives when I die. It's just gonna happen. But I am fully intending to uh, to pass some knives down to, uh, to my offspring when the time comes that I hope would be heirloom worthy and, and would be used you know far beyond my lifetime. The heirloom quality aspect though is something I was, I, in my mind they're two different things. Anyway, 
Um, just thought I'd throw that out there and, and you guys in the comments can tell me I'm wrong again. That's okay too. Um, now we come to the lightning round for today. First question comes from Brian Yance, 5745. I don't know if anyone has asked this question before. I would like to know the difference between S45 VN and S90 V steel. This one's an easy one to compare. Uh, your S90 V will hold an edge longer than the S45. The S45, however, will be a bit tougher. So it's like less likely to chip, but it's not gonna hold an edge quite as long. Both are gonna be pretty stainless. I'm not sure which one is more stainless, but either one of them is gonna be plenty stainless in this case. Hope that helps. Uh, next question comes from user RL2KF7JD6IL, I'm not sure. User was taken. <laughs> user RL3KF7 was taken, so that's true, yeah. Uh, cold steel, oh shoot. I have an example knife out there. We gotta go get it. Pardon us for being unprepared. It's been a crazy day over here. Sorry if I sound a little frenetic. All right, Cold Steel made knives in Carbon V, but the place that made that steel was destroyed from what I heard. What is the closest knife steel to Carbon V? So Carbon V is actually not a steel. Stick with me. Uh, what it is is a testament to the power of marketing. Um, Carbon V was just a marketing name that Cold Steel used on knives like this. As you can see, we've got, uh, this is Old Red River, Carbon V, made in USA, a division of Cold Steel. Classic kind of Green River uh, style Skinner right here. Um, I had to write all this down so I make sure I get all the, uh, the acronyms or the numbers and everything right. Uh, Carbon V was just a marketing name for 0170-6, which was made by Sharon Steel in the US and they went out of business in 1988. They weren't destroyed as far as I know. Um, what it is, is basically just 1095 Carbon Steel with trace amounts of vanadium and chromium, which is almost identical to 1095 CV. Uh, in fact, that CV standing for Crovan is still in use today by folks like K-Bar who make the Becker knives, like the BK-16. Um, in fact, some of the first, I believe, cold steel knives made in Carbon V were actually made by K-Bar. So there you go. If you want something that's Carbon V, 1095 CV is the closest you can get. 1095 is still gonna be just about the same thing. Carbon V's like legendary status at this point, I think has more to do with the coolness of the knives it was on than any actual performative difference to other simple carbon steels. Hope that helps. Well, now we come to our most serious question for the day, which comes from Lone Star Towboy. Does Spreaderco make the best butter knife or is there a more supreme maker? What could be butter? It's margarine for error. Thomas is back. Excellent, excellent reply. Well, I have something for you here. And folks who know, saw me reaching over the side, know what I'm about to do. It's the carcass spreader. That is the best spreading knife right there. I mean, you could, you could spread four pounds of butter in one swipe with this thing, easy. Probably go even higher than that if you want to. Spread a hoagie widthwise. <laughs> Carcass spreader. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. Thanks for all your questions. Keep them coming. Uh, if you have a question that you uh, would like to be considered for a future episode, just leave it in the comments down below. If you want to get your hands on any of these products here in front of me, check out the links in the description that will take you to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, don't forget about our long running Knife Rewards program because the least thing we can do when you buy one of our knives today is give you some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We are signing off. See you next time.